Welcome back. In the last video, we have seen uh, how to find the solution of the heat equation in the finite rod uh, when the when the two ends of the rod are uh, maintained at two different temperatures. So today we will see how to find the temperature in the rod when the both the ends are insulated. Okay. So we will just write the problem as an initial boundary value problem uh, as uh, satisfies along the rod u t minus alpha square u x x equal to zero. So alpha square is a thermal diffusivity constant depending on the uh, material of the rod. So this you have what you have is this zero and L is the length of the rod. So you have spatial uh, variable is x that is L and t is for all times zero to t. And the boundary and initial condition is this is given uh, initial condition at t equal to zero. The rod is at some temperature f x. And boundary condition is uh, u x. The flux will be zero. So that is at zero. T is 0 for every T, this is 1, this is what is the boundary conditions, okay. This is the initial condition Ux at 0, uh, not other end, Lt is also 0 for every T, okay. So these are the boundary conditions. So overall, this is the problem we are going to solve. So this is straightforward, this is just uh, because you see that uh, the boundary conditions are having homogeneous terms, so homogeneous boundary condition that means u x or u a u plus u x that is what is a combination of them right side is 0. So right side if they are constant some other thing then you have to worry you have to use the technique that I have explained in the last video. So because these are homogeneous conditions so we can just straightforward uh, working out we can work out uh, method in a straightforward. So let us see we will solve this by separation of variables so let uh, u of x t be uh, x of x t of t into t of t okay into t of t and you want a non-zero solution so let us say it is a non-zero solution you look for solution in this fashion so substitute into the equation you look for solution of the heat equation okay so as a non-zero solution so because you zero solution is always there so you look for non-zero solution you substitute into the equation what you get is x of x t dash of t that is for ut minus alpha square u x x will be x dash x double dash of x into t of t equal to 0 okay. So you can divide it because it is non-zero so you what you get is t dash of t by t of t minus alpha square x double dash of x by x of x equal to 0. So one more step you can write t dash of t by alpha square you bring it here alpha square t of t equal to x x double dash by x of x. So left hand side is function of t right hand side function of x. So that is possible only if they are constant. So should be some constant lambda arbitrary constant. So the partial differential equation that is a heat equation becomes two uh, ODS. So this is what a spatial domain that is where you have the boundary conditions that will give you the sturm levely problem. So you extract the sturm levely problem for this x x double dash of x minus lambda x of x equal to 0 that is 1 okay. Now the other one is t dash of t minus lambda alpha square t of t equal to 0. This is for t positive this is for x belongs to 0 to L. Now if you apply the boundary conditions here so u x uh, so u x at 0 t equal to 0 will give me x dash of 0 into t of t that is what is this equal to 0 okay t of t equal to 0 this will give me x dash of 0 equal to 0. Similarly u x at uh, l t equal to 0 both the ends are insulated so the other end is insulated so what you get is x dash of l t of t equal to 0 t of t cannot be a function that cannot be a function of t cannot be 0. So what you have is x dash of l equal to 0. So this is what is these boundary conditions with this equation this is ordinary differential this is the sturm levely problem this together will give you the sturm levely problem. So let us write together so you have a x double dash of x minus lambda x of x equal to 0 x dash of 0 equal to 0 which is also same as x dash at l. So this is the sturm levely problem which is already in the self adjoint form. So this is the sturm levely problem regular of course regular sturm levely problem okay. 
So, when you are working in the uh, uh, Cartesian coordinates, you can expect always regular stem level problems is what uh, by the experience okay. So, you can see that uh, this is already in the self adjoint form this equation. So, x is uh, the domain is between 0 to L. This is already self adjoint form that is x dash old dash p is 1 plus q is 0 into x equal to lambda into 1 into x okay. So, w is this immediately the solutions of this uh, Sturm Liouville problem. So, you call this phi and psi the dot product will be from 0 to L that is the domain w is 1. So, there is no weight. So, you have a phi x the psi bar of x dx okay. So, bar does not matter finally because this is already in a self adjoint form. So, implies lambda will be real. So, you can make Eigen functions are also real. So, these solutions will be what we use as a Eigen functions will be real. So, that is how we use it. So, let us see uh, let us uh, try to find uh, solutions here. So, because this is already a self adjoint form. So, lambda is real. So, lambda is real implies lambda is mu square or lambda equal to 0 or lambda equal to minus mu square with mu positive okay. So, lambda equal to mu square if you see x double dash of x minus mu square x of x equal to 0, x is between 0 to L, x dash of 0 is 0, x dash of L. So, this one what is the general solution of this? First you can write the general solution c 1 e power mu x plus c 2 e power minus mu x. Now, we apply this first boundary condition x dash of uh, so for that you need x dash of x that is c 1 mu uh, e power mu x minus c 2 e power minus mu x mu is also mu take it out. So, that is how it is e x dash of mu cannot be mu is a positive. So, mu cannot be 0. So, x dash of 0 equal to 0 implies mu times this one is 0. So, so you have c 1 minus c 2 equal to 0. So, this will give me c 1 equal to c 2. So, once after applying this boundary condition the general solution becomes x of x becomes c 1 equal to c 2. So, that is c 1 c 1 take it out. So, you have c 1 e power mu x and c 2 is as this is going to be cos hyperbolic mu x if you multiply with 2. So, this is what it becomes this is the general solution now. Now, for this you apply other boundary condition x dash of l equal to 0. If you do this you get 2 c 1 sin hyperbolic uh, mu x into mu comes out as a derivative equal to 0. Of course, when you put x equal to l mu l equal to 0. Now, this implies mu cannot be 0 mu is positive 2 cannot be 0 sin mu l sin hyperbolic mu l cannot be 0. So, implies c 1 is 0. Once c 1 is 0 c 2 is also 0. So, this means x of s is completely 0 okay. So, implies x of x is identically 0 that is lambda equal to mu square is not an Eigen value. Now, you can see this uh, lambda equal to 0 here. So, if for this uh, x double dash of x equal to 0 x is between 0 to L that is what is the equation becomes and now you have the boundary condition here x 0 is 0 is x dash of L. Now, what is the general solution here is uh, c 1 plus c 2 uh, c 1 x plus c 2. Now, you apply the boundary condition x dash at 0 is 0 will give me uh, x dash of x that is c 1 equal to 0. So, that is what is 0. So, c 1 is 0. So, this is gone. Now, we apply the other boundary condition x dash at L equal to 0 will give me say so anyway 0 C 2 if you differentiate x dash and put x equal to L that is 0 equal to 0. So, satisfied it is satisfying okay satisfied. So, the boundary condition is satisfied with any C 2. So, C 2 is arbitrary C 2 is arbitrary that means that is C 2 can be taken as 1 okay. If you take 1 non 0 solution 1 is the solution corresponding to L lambda equal to 0 implies 
lambda equal to 0 is an eigenvalue eigenvalue and uh, so you can say that lambda 0 lambda 0 you can represent okay as an eigen function eigenvalue correspondingly x 0 you can write it as 1 okay so when that is what we will do at the end so now you see that at now look at the other case a lambda equal to minus mu square in this case x double dash of x plus mu square x of x equal to 0 x is between 0 to l x dash of 0 equal to 0 equal to x dash at l so this uh, boundary value problem for the ordinary differential equation you can find the first general solution this is c1 cos mu x plus c2 sin mu x now you apply the boundary condition x0 equal to 0 will give me so what is the x dash of x is a c1 minus c1 sin mu x plus c2 cos mu x into mu okay that is what is the x dash of x so if you in this you put x equal to 0 what you get is c2 is 0 and you put x equal to cos mu 0 so cos 0 is 1 so c2 times mu cannot be 0 because mu is always positive so c2 is 0 so this gives me x of x will be c1 cos mu x now on this you apply the other boundary condition x dash at l equal to 0 will give me c1 so minus sin mu x into mu mu comes out so you have this and when you put x equal to l mu l equal to 0 so this implies mu anyway mu is always positive but this quantity can be 0 for some mu positive mu values that is mu l equal to n pi n is running from 0 1 uh, 1 2 3 and so on because mu is always positive and that is why I am choosing n is running from 1 to onwards so this implies mu is n pi by l okay n pi by l n is running from 1 2 3 onwards these are for these values your solution this can be a solution cos mu x is a solution because c1 can be arbitrary so eigen values so eigen values are uh, minus mu square lambda n so because it depends on n let me write lambda n minus mu square is n square pi square by l square and eigen functions are let us call this x n x n of x they are cos mu x cos mu is n pi by l x now in both the case n is running from 1 2 3 and so on now these are the eigen eigenvalues and eigen functions in this case we have already seen that lambda equal to 0 is an eigen eigen value that means if you put n equal to 0 lambda becomes 0 lambda n is 0 so i can actually include 0 here that earlier one lambda equal to 0 by just by writing n equal to 0 1 2 so if i include 0 lambda n is 0 lambda 0 is 0 that is what we have seen lambda is an eigen value corresponding function when you put n equal to 0 cos n equal to 0 pi by l x is actually 0 that is cos 0 that is 1 so, so that is what is the eigen function so I included these are the final eigen values okay these are final eigen values and eigen uh, functions so this means I have u n of x t equal to x n of uh, no once you have x so you solve this x problem now you can solve for t problem so this t problem by putting a lambda equal to uh, of eigen values so t dash of t minus lambda what happens this t dash of t minus lambda is lambda is uh, n square so for each n i have this lambda n so i am calling this t n dash of t minus lambda n that is plus n square pi square by l square into alpha square t dash of t of t t m depending on n so i am putting t n equal to 0 for t positive okay so this is running from n is again 0 1 2 3 onwards so for this we can see that uh, t n of t will become simply for each n you have an arbitrary constant a n e power minus n square pi square alpha square by l square t okay and is running from 
0, 1, 2, 3 onwards. Now, now you can write this u n of x t. So, for each n u n of x t is x n of x into t n of t that is a n uh, e power minus n square pi square alpha square by l square t. This is uh, t n of t into x n of x is cos n pi by l x and you take the superposition of e. So, this one is a solution that satisfies the boundary condition so far. Okay. Each is the solution for each n equal to 0, to 0, 1, 2, 3 onwards for each n this is the solution that satisfies the boundary condition. You superpose all these solutions that is running from 0 to infinity n is from 0 to infinity. So, this is also a solution assume that this is a solution actually you cannot say this is a solution only if this is uh, this series is uniformly convergent. One can actually show by uh, uh, by applying the initial conditions one can actually show that this series is uniformly convergent. Okay. Once you know this uh, apply the initial condition formally and get what is a n and then you, you can actually show that this series is uniformly convergent. Because it is uniformly convergent now you are saying that uh, it is you can differentiate term by term and then put it into the equation it solves because each term is uh, satisfying the heat equation and the boundary conditions. Okay. That is why this superposition principle works. So, superposition of all the solutions you call this of uh, u of x t let this uh, u of x t be the solution be the uh, solution of the heat equation of the heat equation that satisfies that satisfies the boundary conditions. Okay. So, far we have not used the initial conditions. So, we can now apply the initial condition initial condition is what is the initial condition you have u at x 0 is equal to f x. So, from this you can see that n is running from 0 to infinity a n t equal to 0 makes it 1 cos n pi x by l equal to f x. Now, you can use the dot product of the solutions of these uh, solutions of the sturm liouville problem these are Eigen functions. So, make a dot product with the Eigen function both sides cos n pi x by l both sides and make a dot product. So, the right hand side becomes integral 0 to l f x cos these are real valued functions. So, bar does not matter. So, you have a cos n pi x by l d x okay. right hand side the left hand side again it will become a n integral 0 to l cos square n pi x by l d x. So, this is what it becomes because all other n that is not actually this n will become 0 because cos n pi x by l and cos m pi x by l dx will be 0 because integral 0 to l that is 0 because they are complete orthogonal uh, eigenfunctions. So, completeness uh, actually the completeness means when you apply this that is what is actually a completeness. So, f x any f x I am able to write in terms of this. Okay. So, they form complete orthogonal. So, we have not used really completeness actually naturally this uh, initial condition is taken care okay that means f x i am able to any f x i am able to write in terms of these functions so that naturally tells you that these eigen functions are complete complete means any function i am able to write in terms of them as a series so what we use only once we get this form that is coming directly naturally from the initial condition you apply the dot product and get your an so this gives me an as simple this uh, 0 to l these calculations you can do. So, f is given f that can be anything. So, this you can calculate n pi x by l dx, but the denominator you can calculate the left hand side integral 0 to l this cos square uh, n pi x by l this you can do it. Okay. So, this is with this a n the solution the solution is this this is your the this solution u of x t satisfies the heat equation and the boundary condition and the initial condition. So, this solves the problem. So, the required solution is the required solution is uh, u of x t is simply this sum n is from 0 to infinity this is the a n e power minus n square pi square alpha square by l square t times cos n pi x by l. So, this is what is x is between 0 to l and t is from t is positive 
okay. So, this is your domain. So, in this domain you have this uh, width with the a n is as above. So, a n you can simplify this, this is like 1 plus cos 2 n pi x by l okay that you can write divide by 2 okay. This you are integrating from 0 to l dx sin thing will become uh, 0. So, this part will this contribution would not be there. So, what you get is this simply l by 2. So, you have what you get is 2 by l 0 to l f x cos n pi x by l dx. This is actually cosine series what you get is the cosine series Fourier cosine series uh, we are actually using here. So, in the earlier problem when the both the ends are uh, maintained at 0 temperature that is uh, that is where you are using the sign series okay Fourier sign series. So, this is how you solve this insulated problem. Now, we can also work out the same way if you allow the heat exchange at the both the at the boundary boundary points at 0 and L there you will not get explicitly your eigenvalues and eigenfunctions. Eigenvalues will satisfy some dispersion relation some relation okay. So, if you have some transcendental equation so that satisfies so whatever uh, you can actually some transcendental equation that has a roots those roots are eigenvalues. So, you cannot explicitly find them then numerically you can one can find. So, if you label them as uh, lambda 1 lambda 2 lambda n they are eigenvalues correspondingly your solutions you call them. So, the corresponding solutions will be some either uh, in terms of cos or sin that lambda n. So, you do not write lambda you do not replace. So, like here cos cos lambda x is the so, when you cos mu x mu you replace because mu explicitly you found here there you will not be able to find mu explicitly you are calling lambda n itself. So, in that case uh, cos or sin whatever form comes they are mu replaced with lambda n. So, those are your uh, Eigen functions. So, corresponding eigen with by replacing uh, lambda with uh, that lambda 1 lambda 2 lambda n you can uh, find this T n of T and make a product and superposition and finally, apply the initial condition with the dot product whatever is defined okay. There you can have the dot product uh, from the Sturm Levely uh, give, gives you what is the dot product when you when you see extract the Sturm Levely problem. So, and then find the solution for that problem with the heat exchange problem. So, you, you can work out I will just write it as a problem. So, ex, uh, I will write it as an ex exercise solve this problem u t this initial bound to L problem u t minus alpha square u x x equal to 0 x is between 0 to L and t is positive and uh, initial value is u at x 0 equal to rod is at the temperature f x boundary condition is now u x at 0 t plus some k okay some exchange with this uh, constant k 1. So, this proportional at 0 to t. So, heat is going out or coming inside some exchange is happening at the uh, boundary at x equal to 0 this is a one boundary condition. Other boundary condition is similar one 0 uh, l t plus some other constant k 2 u at l t equal to 0. So, these are your boundary conditions initial condition here. So, that is your heat equation. So, this together you can solve this by separation of variables. Okay, because the domain is special domain is finite. So, this is how you can solve this uh, heat equation. Okay. So, in the next video we will try to so, so, so far we have uh, dealt with uh, wave and heat equations in unbounded domains and uh, uh, finite domains okay and uh, if you consider so far we have actually considered two dimensional wave equation and we solved in a circular domain okay as a drum problem we have solved just to demonstrate you that how to use the Sturm Levely how to extract the Sturm Levely problem that is a Bessel type of uh, Sturm Levely from singular Sturm Levely uh, type of uh, system you can extract and try to solve it okay for the wave equation. Heat equation we have so far we have only seen the one dimensional heat equation. So, if you actually see the two dimensional heat equation that is like what is the heat equation. So, if you see if you instead of considering the rod if you consider a plate. So, let us say two dimensional plate okay. So, let us say two dimensional plate if you consider. So, what you get is uh, everything is same except u t minus alpha square instead of u x x what you get is the u x x plus u y y. So, this is the two dimensional heat equation. Equal to 0 
x y belongs to the plane let us say R2. So if you have infinite uh, plane that is what you have or you say some domain D that is part of uh, plane okay it can be even same as the uh, plane itself. So if you have this like this and you need to provide a uh, plate is at the temperature initial temperature x0 xy so it is a function of xy right and t equal to 0 u is now is a u is a function of x y t okay u is like this so u satisfies this this equation and this initial data x y t equal to 0 that is now you can give some f x y f depends on this and then so that where for every x y belongs to d this satisfies this this is your initial condition and boundary condition is you can provide if it depends on the boundary. So boundary if you call this is your D and delta D if you call the boundary you can say some you can give any boundary condition you can maintain a plate at some temperature at the boundary. So that if you say on the boundary x y and for all t equal to 0 if you maintain some, tem some temperature let us say t1 for every x y belongs to this uh, boundary delta D okay. So this is a two dimensional uh, heat equation so this is the initial boundary value problem for the two dimensional heat equation. So this also we can, one can solve uh, using uh, so let us not uh, do this one as a, as a heat equation we will not solve because it is involved. Uh, what we do is uh, when you have a plate like this initially at some temperature and you maintain some boundary boundary keeping uh, maintaining that some temperature at the boundary. So what happens uh, after uh, after after some time it reaches the steady state right. So that is what we have seen as T goes to if we maintain keep maintaining at 0 temperature initially at some heated plate eventually it will become 0 that is that steady state condition. So eventually when you as T goes to infinity U of X T X Y T becomes simply 0 okay that this right hand side this so whatever the function as at T infinity for larger T this is simply function of x y okay there is no time it is not changing it is simply a stagnant so it is reaching the steady state that means u of x y t is actually u of x y itself okay. So that means it does not depend on a t steady state reaches the steady state if you maintain the temperature one this is at t1 this side is t2 this is at t3 t4 so you will have some kind of steady state combination of t1 t2 t4 so that is how some linearly or whatever you may get all as t goes to infinity that is what you see okay if you maintain at the temperature t1 t2 t3 t4 for the boundary. So in any case you reach the steady state okay steady state reaches as t goes to infinity. So what is the steady state means that is u of x y t the temperature which depends on t becomes function of x y as t goes to infinity this, that does not depend on uh, t okay. So if that is the case what is ut ut becomes then the equation becomes steady state uh, then steady state heat equation is heat equation becomes what happens ut ut is ut is actually now it is a function of it does not depends on t that is 0 minus alpha square now uxx plus uyy equal to 0 okay alpha square this cannot be 0 so this is a plate parameter. So you have uh, this is 0 this is nothing but your Laplace equation so Laplace this is a Laplace equation for the temperature. So steady state temperature satisfies the Laplace equation okay. So u is uh, u is only depending on x y. So for every x y belongs to this d. Okay. So this is the Laplace equation. This is the uh, this is what we can solve. Okay. So we will we can solve. So though you are actually as you are if you are next uh, in the next few videos we will solve uh, methods to solve boundary value problems for the Laplace equation because there is no time we do not give any initial uh, condition. So only boundary will be there you have to provide the boundary data. So when you are solving the Laplace equation you are actually dealing with uh, two dimensional heat equation which is at the steady state. So in that sense we are actually dealing second two dimensional heat equation okay. So this is what we will see in the next video. 
So, we will try to solve uh, methods to find uh, solutions of the Laplace equation with the boundary data okay and uh, both uh, Cartesian coordinates. So, we start with the Cartesian coordinates and then uh, we will move on to circular domains or where different kinds of uh, forms okay different kinds of circular domains what are all, all possible domains we can solve uh, we can uh, we can solve by the separation of variable technique okay in which we can actually the main idea is to extract sturm levely problem and then make use of eigenvalues and eigenfunctions for the superposition of these solutions okay get the solutions and their and, the, and its superposition and finally get the solution in a separable form this is what we will see in the next video thank you very much. Mm -hmm.